Welcome to this second episode of Research Recap for the Future. In this second episode, we will be talking about viscoelastic properties. Viscoelastic properties are properties of materials that are both solid-like and liquid-like. And because they are both solid-like and liquid-like, they exhibit properties of bouncing back and also flowing. So bouncing back like solids and flowing like liquids. It turns out that such materials are very much around us and the human tissue itself, it's largely viscoelastic. So we measured viscoelastic properties of individual cells to see if they are, have any importance for cell function. And indeed, that's what we found out in this work. Viscoelastic properties of differentiating blood cells are fate and function dependent. We used many mathematical models, models of viscoelasticity, such as this Burgers model with two elastic parameters, E1 and E2, and two viscous parameters, eta1 and eta2, to parameterize and have insights on these properties. We also used the standard linear liquid model with two viscous parameters and one elastic parameter. We used what is called the parallel model to go further into categorizing and analyzing our measurements of deformation of individual cells. It turns out that this work on viscoelasticity of individual cells was first started by Francis Crick of DNA fame. They got the Nobel Prize for finding out the structure of DNA back in 1962 for work they did in 1953. And guess what? It was in 1950 that they worked on viscoelastic properties of um, individual cells but didn't think or probably just didn't think they were important for cell function and abandoned it. That's where we took off from, in the same laboratory. So this is the work they published in 1950. They just measured the viscoelastic properties. We took off from there, measured the viscoelastic properties and discovered that they are fate and function dependent. They are important for cell physiology. And people have found our work useful and have confirmed it in so many other methods, we're using so many other methods, and we have received over or close to 200 citations since then. You can read the details for yourself. So for the future, viscoelastic properties will continue to be very important in tissue engineering, in getting appropriate materials for um, helping people who have cancer or people who need implants, so many areas, including regenerative medicine. And the mathematical models that enable the parameterization will, of course, continue to be important. Here are the fun people we did this fun stuff with, some of them, and most of this is carried out in the University of Cambridge. Incidentally, in the same laboratory, the Cavendish Laboratory, where Francis Crick started this work and then abandoned it. It was good that he did the DNA part and now we have done the cellular level viscoelasticity. All right, thanks for your attention and have fun. Watch out for the next episode.